friends welcome to biology made easy today we'll start a new part of the cell cycle and cell division that is meiosis so in meiosis what happens what is the difference between mitosis and meiosis in the very first video i have told you that the cell cycle and cell division is very easy but when questions come sometimes students fail to answer that is why be careful meiosis was first discovered by oscar hartig in c urchin and the name meiosis was given by farmer and mure while the details of the meiosis was studied by winnie water so what is meiosis meiosis is a reduction of division in which at the end of division there are only four daughter cells which are qualitatively and quantitatively different from the parent cell whereas in mitosis two cells were produced and both are identical and in this case there is a reduction in chromosome number so meiosis is also known as reduction of cell division now since there is a reduction in chromosome number it always takes place in case of diploid or polyploid cells it will never takes place in haploid cells because the chromosome cannot be reduced to half n by 2 so always in diploid and polyploid and meiosis always takes place in the sexually reproducing organisms because when male and female gametes are produced they have to be reduced to half through reduction division through meiosis and again during fertilization they will combine together so that the normal normal number will be restored that is meiosis now the cell in which meiosis takes place is known as meiocyte this is again very important from examination point of view meiocyte so what are the examples of meiocytes one is oocyte the other is spermatocyte these are usually in case of animals and in case of plants they may be sporocytes when the spores are produced in case of plants so these are the different examples of meiocytes now again when we discuss the details of meiosis first we have to know how many types of meiosis are there there are mainly three types one is zygotic meiosis or this is known as initial meiosis zygotic or initial meiosis zygotic meiosis usually takes place in those organisms where there is a haplontic life cycle and what are the example examples usually algae and fungi because algae and fungi their main plant body is a haploid gametophytic so when sexual reproduction takes place the male and female haploid gametes they combine together to give rise to zygote so the zygote the zygote is the only diploid stage and immediately there will be meiosis and it will produce four n n n haploid cells and again the haploid that is haploid stage is dominant in the life cycle so it is known haplontic life cycle example algae and fungi why this is known as initial meiosis because it takes place in primitive plants now you come to the second one the second one is <coughs> sporogenetic meiosis sporogenetic meiosis this is known as intermediate meiosis and where it occurs it occurs almost in all higher plants starting from bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms 
and <coughs> in this type of plants, graphite, teratophyte, limnosperm, and geosperms, you will find there is a haplodiplontic type of life cycle. Haplodiplontic life cycle. That means both haploid and diploid are equally represented. You have studied graphite, teratophyte, hive plants, also you have read all these things. So, in these plants, when uh, there is a, a sporangium is produced. Inside this sporangium, the meiosis takes place and haploid spores are produced. That is why it is known as sporogenetic meiosis. And intermediate because it takes place in higher plants. The third one, third one is gametic meiosis, or this is known as terminal meiosis. And this takes place usually in case of animals, where you will find a diplodic life cycle. Because all animals, they are diploid, and diploid is dominant. When they produce so sex organs, male and female gametes, only at that time there is meiosis, and again haploid gametes are produced. Again they combine together to come to the diploid. So here haploid stage is restricted only to the male and female gametes. That is why this is not terminal because it takes place in advanced animals. So these are the three types of meiosis. Now, meiosis takes place in a two stages. Here also there is a karyokinesis and cytokinesis. But in karyokinesis, the nucleus divides twice, while in mitosis divides only once. The nucleus will divide twice, but the DNA replication will take place only once, not twice. So here I have given a sketch, you see. The meiosis, it is divided into meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is known as heterotypic division. Why heterotypic division? Because this is the stage where there is a reduction in chromosome number. <clears throat> so it is known as uh, uh, heterotypic division meiosis 1. Meiosis 2 is known as homotypic division because here, just like mitosis, there will be equal distribution. Again, in both the cases, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, the four stages are there prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So, to distinguish between them, the meiosis 1, four stages are prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1. <coughs> and in meiosis 2, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, then number does a 2, 2, 2. So that Suppose we will tell metaphase. Which metaphase? If I have to tell whether it is 1 or 2, anaphase 1 or 2, so that we can know whether it is coming under heterotypic or homotypic. And after each, there is again cytokinesis. After meiosis 1, there is cytokinesis. After meiosis 2, also there is cytokinesis. But in between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, here I have, you see, I have written in uh, uh, red ink interkinesis. Interkinesis means it between two. A nuclear division, so meiosis 1 and meiosis, interkinesis means it's just like interface. There will be some synthesis of proteins, RNA, uh, amino acids, all these things will be there, but DNA replication will not be there. That is the difference from interface and interkinesis. So these are the different steps. So now what we'll discuss? Now we'll start meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, there is a prophase 1, and the prophase 1 is the longest stage. Again, it is divided into five sub-stages. Leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, diplotin, diagensis. Or you can tell leptonima, zygonima, pachynima, diplonima, and diagensis. These are five sub-stages because it is very long stage. So, what are the different events that are taking place during this uh, prophase one that is very, very important because most of the important events take place only during that prophase 1. And if you can understand prophase 1, metaphase 1, and anaphase 1, you think 95% of meiosis you know. That is why prophase 1, metaphase 1, and anaphase 1, these are the three stages which are very, 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 very important. So, let us start. Now we will start meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, we will discuss prophase 1. And in prophase 1, there are five substages. So, first one we will discuss leptotin. 
This is the first test. So now we will discuss leptotene. Now since leptotene is the first substage of a prophase 1, before that what are there? Before that there is an interface G1, S, G2. And you know that during this interface the chromosomes are very long, thin, less coiled. But in S page DNA is already replicated, that means each chromosome has two DNA molecules, all these things are taking place. But still the chromosomes are very long. So in a leptotene, this is the cell and this is the nucleus and this is the uh, uh, nucleus and to one side there is uh, centriole is there. Now leptotene, leptotene means a lepto means a thin and uh, tin means a thread. That means in a leptotene the chromosomes are thin thread like structures thin thread like structures that is important point now the compaction of chromosome starts just like mitosis in mitosis uh, due to condensing cohesion protein they start condensing the same thing will start here there will be compaction of chromosome starts compaction of chromosomes it starts and it will continue till metaphase that will say throughout zygotin, packetin, diplotin, diagnosis and metaphase, it will continue. Only after metaphase it will stop. So compaction of chromosomes continues. Now when the, gradually the chromosomes will compact, what will happen? It will appear as if the chromosome is looking like a string in which there are some bead like structures. There are some bead like structures looking like a necklace. That means this is the beaded structure. Beaded structure. That means during leptotin it appears like this a, beaded, a string with several bits. Previously, these bits were called as chromomeres. But uh, that is old view. At present, these chromomeres are nothing. They are nucleosomes and solenoids. Nucleosomes and solenoids. Because you know that when the octaver protein is surrounded by DNA, that gives rise a nucleosome. And when it's six nucleosomes, they circle around, around, it gives rise a solenoid. So these chromomeres are nothing. They are the nucleosomes and solenoid. It gives a beaded appearance. So here they appear the, like a, uh, beaded structures. Now next thing what happens, suppose we will take only 4 chromosomes because for uh, diagram everything it will be very easy for us so that we can understand very easily. Now this is one chromosome, these are two chromosomes, then these are an another, two, another two chromosomes. Why I have drawn in two different colors? Because you know in each cell whatever is the chromosome number two are paternal, two are maternal. They are known as homologous chromosomes. So suppose this is chromosome one, this is chromosome one, this is suppose chromosome two, this is chromosome two, that is paternal and maternal chromosomes. That is why I have done it to different colors. So here homologous chromosomes are there. And what is the C value? In S space already has a double T. If the, if the cell is 2N, now already is 4N. So here also you will get uh, uh, the C value is 4N. And homologous chromosomes are there. Mark another very important thing. At the tips of these chromosomes, the ends of the chromosomes are known as telomeres. Already we have discussed uh, during uh, the structure of the chromosome, these are the telomeres. In leptotene, what happens? These chromosomes, they converge at a particular point. They convert where these telomeres, the telomeres of each chromosome they convert at a single point. And what is that point? This the side to which the centrosome or centriole lies. Not to other side. Suppose here this is the centriole, then all of them will converge to that point. So it will converge converge to that point. That means they will be attached by means of telomeres to this uh, 
uh, a nuclear membrane. So then this, this is another one, this is another one. They are converging. This structure is known as bouquet structure. Bouquet structure. Because you see, when the telomeric ends are converging at a point towards the centriole, then their entire chromosome is just uh, ballooned out. And how it appears? You see, a bouquet, the petals are open, and just the, the, we are uh, having the pedicel. Similarly, all these uh, chromosomes, they have ballooned out, and this appears like a bouquet. So this is known as, this electrotin is also known as bouquet stage. Now if you ask me, what is the importance of this bouquet stage? Remember, one important thing. After leptotin, there will, the, the next stage is zygotin. In a zygotin, the zygotin, there is a pairing between homologous chromosomes. But how each chromosome will identify its homologous chromosome? At this stage. At this bouquet stage, they will identify each other that which is homologous chromosome. That is the importance of this bouquet stage. And this bouquet stage is found almost in all uh, organisms, plants, animals, and fungi. So this is the importance of a leptotin stage, the first stage. Now the leptotin will switch over to zygotin stage. In zygotin stage, the homologous chromosomes pair with each other by a phenomenon which is known as synapsis. This is number two. Number two is zygotin. Zygotin or zygonema. This is the second substance. Now during this zygotin, what happens? The homologous chromosomes will pair with each other. Suppose uh, this is uh, one chromosome, this is another chromosome. Either pattern will matter now. Now the other chromosome is uh, this is one chromosome, this is the second chromosome. These are the centromeres. And uh, this is the nuclear membrane, this is the cell. If this is the diagram of uh, leptotin, then this is the diagram of uh, zygotin. Now, see here in a leptotin, there are four chromosomes, two are, two are paternal, two are maternal. But here, the paternal and maternal chromosomes are pairing with each other. Suppose this is chromosome number one, this is chromosome number one, this is suppose chromosome number ten, this is chromosome number ten, like that. Then these are known as bivalents, and this pairing is known as synapsis. Synapsis, or you can call it synthesis. Synapsis or synthesis. So synapsis is very important from examination point of view. So the synapsis of homologous chromosome take place. As a result, here there are four chromosomes. Here there are four chromosomes, but two pairs and both pairs are homologous chromosomes. So that is the importance of this zygotin stage. Very often it is asked where the, uh, in which stage the synapse takes place. And suppose so in a cell there are 20 chromosomes, then uh, how many pairs are there? Haplet number 10. These are the important questions. But here there is another thing. How these two chromosomes pair? Where the pair will start? The pairing may start at the terminal end, from one end it will start and it may gradually proceed to the other in a zipper like manner. Zipper like manner. As you have seen that when we close the zip or open the zip, how the nerves fit with each other. In the same way, when the two homologous chromosomes will pair, they will pair in a zipper like manner, means a gene to gene, specific manner. And if it will start from one end and proceed to the other, we we'll call it as a pro-terminal, because starting from one end. If it will start from the central wire and will proceed to either side, it is pro-centric. And if it will start at any point and will proceed to both sides, then it is known as random. That means the synapsis always starts in a zipper like manner in any one of the, any one of the three methods, pro-terminal, pro and random. But uh, when the two homologous chromosomes are held together, 
for a long time because they, they will continue to remain together till the end of uh, the third stage that is packeting. But uh, what makes them to hold each other for such a long time? Because uh, in comparison to leptotin, digotin, packeting is a longer stage. So how they will be held together? It is because of the formation of a synaptinimal complex between the two homologous chromosomes. Suppose uh, this is one chromosome, this is the chromatid, then this is one homologous chromosome, this is one homologous chromosome and this is the chromatid. So the, these are the chromatids. This space in between the two chromosomes, this is known as synaptinimal complex. This is known as synaptinimal complex. The term coined by Moses, scientist. Now in synaptinimal complex, this part is known as a lateral element. Lateral element and this is known as central element. The central element consists of RNA plus proteins, while the lateral element consists of RNA plus DNA plus protein, because it is after it is chromatid. So this synaptinimal complex holds together the two uh, homologous chromosomes till the end of packaging. And in this central element, here and there, you will find some structures like this. This is known as recombination nodules. Recombination nodule. This recombination nodule is responsible, or you can tell it facilitates the process of crushing over, which will take place in the next stage, that is packet. So these are the important characters of leptotin digotin. We will discuss the remaining in the next video. By this time, take a cup of coffee, enjoy, and you can understand everything perfectly. So again, we will meet in the next video, starting from packaging. Thank you very much.